guys. I was recently asked about my position on honey as a vegan, and I promised that I would do a video on it. And it's a video that I've been meaning to do for a little while now, but I just kept putting it off until now. Well, until tomorrow, because first we need to talk more about insects. Specifically, what is the vegan position on insects? Which sounds like an easy answer, right? Vegan means no animals, no animal products. Insects are animals, so therefore, eating insects, killing insects is not vegan. I think it's a bit more complex than that. The point of being vegan for me, and I think for most ethical vegans, is to reduce suffering. And I don't like pain, obviously. You don't like pain. I don't like causing others pain. And that includes any being that can feel pain, not just humans. This is why I'm against eating animals, particularly factory farmed animals. It causes unnecessary pain since I don't need animals or animal products to survive. On the other hand, I'm definitely pro eating plants because plants cannot feel pain. So the real question is, what animals feel pain? We're pretty sure that other vertebrates like ourselves do, and even some invertebrates like cephalopods, but what about insects? First, it's important to understand the distinction between nociception and pain. An organism can have a um, almost instant response to a negative stimulus without actually experiencing pain. So for instance, think about touching a hot stove and quickly moving your hand away. Did you consciously think about moving your hand before you did it? It's kind of natural for us to think that we did, but the truth is we didn't. It isn't until afterwards that we think, oh damn, that was really hot. So this, um, again, almost, you know, this reflex action, this is what's called nociception. The important thing is that an organism can have nociception without actually experiencing pain. Nociception does not imply suffering. And this is where things get kind of tricky. As I said, we're pretty sure that vertebrates, including fish, feel pain, but the issue isn't so clear with insects. It would seem like they don't, since most insects do not have nociceptors, but studies have shown that they do, some insects do have a sort of nociception-like response as far as avoidance or escape, such as a fruit fly larva rolling away from a hot pen. So it seems that nociception or something like it is possible in at least some insects, which makes sense from an evolutionary standpoint. Obviously, avoiding harmful things would be advantageous to an organism. But what about actual pain? Well, it's impossible to know if any being outside of our own selves experiences pain. You know, obviously we're, we're pretty sure that humans do and also pretty sure that other vertebrates do, as I said earlier, uh, because of how they act after um, experiencing something harmful, right? So if a dog gets injured, it will growl, it will guard its body part, it will limp. On the other hand, insects tend not to show these type of responses. A 1984 paper on the topic concluded that insects will continue with normal activities even after severe injury or removal of body parts. For instance, like a locust continuing to feed itself while it's being eaten alive. But this isn't quite the whole story. There is a bit of evidence that may suggest that certain insects might feel pain, such as a study published in 2011 on bees. The researchers first trained bees to associate one smell with a sweet taste, something good, and the other smell with a bitter taste, something bad. They then took half of the bees and shook them for 60 seconds. And what they found when they tested them again, they found that the bees who had been shaken were less likely to respond to the good smell, to the smell that was associated with something sweet. So they kind of behaved pessimistically, right? They behaved as if there was an increased expectation of something bitter rather than something sweet. And although these scientists concluded that these tests don't imply that bees necessarily experience emotions or pain like we do, one of the researchers, Geraldine Wright, did note that in terms of what we are able to measure, a shaken honeybee is no less anxious than a lonely dog or a rat in a barren cage. So do insects feel pain? We don't know for sure. Uh, honestly, the evidence points more towards no than yes. However, I do agree with award-winning author and entomologist Dr. Jeffrey Lockwood uh, with his position regarding using insects for research. It seems ethically obligatory to guard against the possibility that insects feel pain. If we use anesthetic and it turns out that insects don't experience pain, the material cost of our mistake is very low. However, if we don't use anesthetic and it turns out that insects were in agony, then the moral cost of our mistake is quite high.
In other words, because we don't know for sure whether or not insects feel pain, it behooves us to treat them as though they do. Because if we don't, and it turns out that we're wrong and they do experience pain, that's a lot of unnecessary suffering. Now I'll be honest, I set out to do this video with a completely different outlook. I agreed with Peter Singer that bugs don't experience pain and so I didn't really care. Eat insects, eat honey, fry ants on the sidewalk, I don't really care. And also this comes from a, a personal bias that I have. I don't like insects. I have a borderline phobia of insects. So it, honestly, I would much prefer if uh, we had a 100% insects do not suffer. I would prefer that, but that's not rational. Morality isn't about feelings or yuck factor. And researching this topic for this video, particularly reading accounts from, again, Jeffrey Lockwood and uh, Brian Tomasik from reducingsuffering.org, it helped me to look past my bug bias and come to a more rational conclusion. I don't know if insects suffer, but that's good enough for me to treat them as though they do. So now that I have fully explained my position on pain and insects, I can fully explain my position on honey, which I will do in tomorrow's video. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I would really love to hear your thoughts on bugs and insects and what you think about them from a vegan standpoint. Do you care? Do you not care? Do you go out of your way to help little bugs and make sure you don't step on them and stuff, which is something I, I now have to, to start really doing. Not that I went out of my way to like fry ants on the sidewalk or anything. That's crazy. <laughs> but um, you know, if there's a bug in my house, just kill it. I don't just kill it. Don't, don't put it outside if you want, but just get rid of it, please. So I now have to really uh, not do that. Of course, there's a whole other issue of people putting spiders outside of their home when the spiders actually lived in your home, so then you put them outside and they die. So um, it's, it's a much trickier situation, um, I find, than just don't drink milk. That's really easy, right? Don't eat meat. It's, it's pretty easy not to do. It's, it's a lot harder to avoid killing insects since uh, basically every day we're all killing insects in, in one way or another, driving our cars or just living in our homes, right? Um, eating plants that have been harvested that involved at least some, you know, insect death, uh, not just from insecticides, but from the harvesting itself. So yeah, it's a really interesting uh, topic and I think it's one that should be discussed, you know, as rationally as possible instead of just insects are animals, so you gotta not eat them. That's that's not exactly helpful, and I think it kind of helps make vegans look a little bit crazy, right? When people go, what? You're vegan for animals, okay, I get that, but bugs, really? I think it's good to explain our position, again, in, in a rational way. Anyway, I'm rambling now. Thank you so much for watching. Again, um, if you're not subscribed and you like this kind of thing, then subscribe. Uh, be sure to stay tuned for my honey video coming out tomorrow, unless you're watching this video later and it's already out, in which case, go ahead and watch it now, and enjoy, and leave a comment. And thanks again, and I will have a new video tomorrow.